Hello everyone and welcome back to today's video. Today I'm starting something just a little bit different. Today I'm going to be starting a series of videos teaching you geology. Uh, so let's get right into it. Today I'm going to be teaching you about uh, the different types of rocks. Holy smokes, is it windy up here today? Alright, so there are three different types of rocks that you uh, need to know about. The first one being igneous rock, the second one being sedimentary rock, and the third one being metamorphic rock. Okay, let's begin with igneous rocks. Now, igneous rocks are molten rocks. The rocks that begin in a molten stage, or they became molten. And there's actually two different types of igneous rock. The first one uh, being intrusive igneous rock, and the second one being extrusive igneous rock. So the first type of rock I'm going to talk about is intrusive igneous rock. Now, intrusive igneous rock is magma that was underground and it never reached the surface, and instead it slowly cooled underground. Now this slow cooling process allowed the minerals that make up the composition of the magma to slowly crystallize. This allows for large individual mineral crystals to form in the rock. So here's an example of a igneous intrusive rock. And if you look real closely, I don't know if you can see that, but it's made up of individual mineral grains. And they're in no particular order. It's usually a mixed matrix of crystal minerals that make up the uh, intrusive rock. And this is, of course, a um, dike. If you look here, you can see the bedrock, the, the host rock off to the side here, and you can see where this um, magma intruded in between these two different layers of rock. And eventually it slowly cooled over time until we got this nice hard uh, granite-like rock. And this is what a igneous intrusive rock is. And the other type of rock, which I will talk about next, is igneous extrusive rock. Here's another example of an igneous intrusive rock. As, and as you can see, all the individual minerals are clearly seen in this matrix. And this is, of course, a uh, granite. Intrusive rocks, since they cool underground, this allows the minerals to get quite large so you can see them uh, very easily. All right, so I've moved to a different location, and the other type of igneous rock is extrusive igneous rock. Now, this is rock that has, uh, this is molten rock that has reached the surface and erupted through a fissure or vent, and that's uh, known as a volcano, a volcanic eruption. So this is molten rock that has reached the surface uh, as lava, since it's reached the surface, it has been exposed to air, which allows the rock to cool more quickly, so it doesn't allow uh, a very large crystalline structure. So instead, igneous rocks, uh, igneous extrusive rocks, will form a fine grain texture instead of a crystalline structure like an intrusive rock. So here's a closer look at this uh, extrusive rock. This rock type is, uh, in particular, is called basalt. And as you can see, uh, when I get up close here, you cannot see any crystals in it. It is a fine grain texture. Uh, that is the main difference between an intrusive and extrusive rock. So an extrusive rock will be very fine grained, uh, and usually it's dark in color, and you can't see any individual crystals like quartz. Another thing about um, extrusive rocks, since they were lavas, uh, they, they uh, usually, especially in basalt, will have uh, many pores and holes. Uh, this is where gases were escaping the molten rock uh, while it was still in its molten stage. And as you can see, there's lots of holes in this. And again, uh, you can see the porous texture of this rock here. And again, this is basalt. So as you can probably tell, I am by a highway, and this is a big road cut where they slice right through basaltic rock. And at one time, this was one big lava flow. Just a little further up on the hillside, you can actually see the individual folds from the lava surface. I didn't expect to see that here, but you can see how the lava was folding as it was flowing. I'll zoom in on that. It's just pretty, pretty interesting there. Also, uh, as we go to 
just a little further over to the left, you'll notice that the rock goes from more of a solid look to more porous. Uh, it's quite interesting. All right, so the next rock type I'll be talking about is sedimentary rock. And sedimentary rock is quite common. Um, the mountains behind me are made of sedimentary rock. The mountains I'm standing on are made of sedimentary rock. And how sedimentary rock is formed is, of course, from sediments. So these sediments can either break off from existing rock due to weathering, or these sediments can dissipate in lakes and fall, uh, well, lakes and oceans. So sediments in lakes and oceans can fall towards the bottom and make up the sediments that make up the bottom of the oceans or lakes. And as more and more sediment builds on top of each other, it creates layers. And eventually the bottom layers become compact and they eventually will harden into solid rock. Uh, there's many different types of sedimentary rock. There's sandstones, there's limestones, you have slate, shale, uh, there's several different varieties, and a lot of them can form in different ways. So th these mountains are sedimentary rocks, and these mountains date back, uh, not all of them, but these ones in particular date back to the Cambrian time period. And at that time period, it, there was a large ocean, and these rocks were formed from sediments from that ocean. So it's possible to find Cambrian fossils in some of these rocks. The other, the other type of sedimentary deposit, and I'll go on this in more detail eventually, but um, if you look here, uh, you'll see this plateau, not plateau, peninsula here, sticking out in towards the lake. And this peninsula is made up of sediments, uh, mainly large gravel, boulder, sand, um, and that itself isn't a sedimentary rock, but those sediments are from weathering from um, existing mountains and other rocks. So this peninsula here, we can say, is made up of sedimentary deposits. Got it. Here's some examples of sedimentary rock there. Again, you're not really going to see any large, you're not going to see really any crystals or minerals uh, in the rock. Uh, here's another one. I believe this is a limestone, but I could be wrong. Uh, rock, sedimentary rocks can be hard to uh, identify at times. But you'll see this one has banding. And there's other rocks, too, that can have banding, but um, sedimentary rocks, um, we don't usually call it banding, we call it, call it layers. Sedimentary lock, rocks have layers, which is really typical, since that's how they're formed, layer by layer. Here's another example of sedimentary rock, and you can see it's dark in color. Um, and igneous rocks can also be dark in color, but I know this one is a sedimentary rock because you can still see the layers in it, and the texture of it is different. It's not grainy, it's really smooth, and I believe this is a slate. Alright, so the third and final type of rock is metamorphic rock, which is a rock that has changed. Now this is uh, the type of rock I think people get confused on, but basically, a, meta, a, a sedimentary rock and an igneous rock can both be converted into metamorphic rock through heat and pressure. So an example I can come up with uh, to better explain this is think of dough, like you're going to make some bread, you have dough, and we'll say the dough in this case is sedimentary rock. You throw that dough into your oven and eventually as it cooks, it slowly turns into um, bread. And after a long period of time, your dough is now a loaf of bread. And it's the same way with rocks. You take a sedimentary rock, you give it some heat and pressure, and over a course of thousands to millions of years, uh, the minerals will slowly um, change into a different type of rock. And the same thing can happen for igneous rock. Igneous rock can also change into metamorphic rock. So here's an example of a metamorphic rock. And there are different types of metamorphic rocks and different grades of metamorphic rock. But this metamorphic, metamorphic rock is called gneiss. And metamorphic rocks usually will be made up of visible minerals, much kind of similar to um, granites, like intrusive rocks. You can see that uh, 
individual minerals and crystalline structures, but usually um, they're not mixed randomly. They're usually or kind of organized, and in this case, with the nice rock, they have different layers. So you can see here, there's a darker layer, a lighter colored layer, another dark layer, and a lighter. So it has layers, um, and this is called bands when we're referring to metamorphic gneiss. Uh, gneiss is the highest grade of metamorphic rock, and it usually has bands like this. And gneiss, um, like I said, is the highest grade of metamorphic rock, and then if you go any further, it starts to uh, melt back into a igneous rock. All right, so I have another example of a metamorphic rock, and you can see on this slope here, there's all kinds of white stones and what these stones are it's uh, marble now marble is a metamorphic rock and it comes from limestone so limestone when it goes under metamorphism from intense heat and pressure the limestone will chemically change into marble I'll talk about this later on but there's two different types of metamorphism you have regional metamorphism and then you have contact metamorphism. And regional is metamorphism that is taken over, is taken place in a large area of land, usually in areas where mountain building processes, processes are taking place. And contact metamorphism is when an intrusion like magma intrudes into the surrounding rock and due from the intense heat of the magma, the rock surrounding that intrusion changes into a metamorphic rock, and that is uh, the case with this marble here. This marble was limestone, and not too far in this direction, there is a very large magma intrusion, which now it's uh, granite, since it's solidified deep underground. And this rock, uh, the limestone, due to the intense heat of the magma, slowly changed into marble. So, if you're ever looking uh, a geologic map, and you see a magma intrusion uh, next to and in contact with limestone, it's very likely that you will find marble at that contact zone. And those are, those are the three different rock types. And again, I'll eventually make a, another video that'll go over it in more detail. Well, it's getting late and there's a beautiful sunset right now. My camera will fail to pick it up, but... This whole area right here, the forest down below is like a pink and orange. It's just a really brilliant sunset. Zoom in a little bit. It's hard to keep the camera steady when I zoom in this much, but it's one heck of a sunset. There's the valley. Well, again, that was your quick little lesson on the three rock types. You might have learned something new, and maybe not. Maybe you already knew this, but that'll do it for today. Uh, hope you all are having a nice evening, and I hope to see you soon. So take care, everyone, and have a great fall, because it's, it's coming. It's definitely coming. See you soon.